Okay, so mechanics exam ended a couple days ago, and I decided I would start studying for my electricity and magnetism exam coming up. Most of the problems will be coming from the uh, Griffith's book, which is Introduction to Electrodynamics, the fourth edition. Uh, almost all of the problems will be from this textbook, so it will hopefully be good for most people. It's kind of a go-to undergrad textbook. We're starting with chapter two. We'll finish in chapter six, hopefully. And the first one says, find the electric field, a distance z above the midpoint between equal and opposite charges, plus and minus q, a distance d apart. Same as example 2.1, except the charge at x equals plus d over two is negative q. So if you wanted to follow along, they do an example problem, example 2.2, and it's incredibly similar. Uh, I'm actually going to do my way a little bit different because I like it a little bit more, but it's uh, very similar. So I'm just going to draw it out to begin with. I'm going to try to pick somewhere down the middle here. Not always perfect, but that's okay. And we'll say we want it at a point P. That's what that point is. And so that's not perfect either, but it's okay. Uh, we'll call this plus Q. plus Q, and then the red we'll call minus Q. And if they're the midpoint between, then this, and they're a D part, and this is the midpoint, then this is D over two, and this side is also D over two, right? That's because the whole distance between them is D, and if they're in between, then they're d over 2 away from the origin, the origin that we defined. And this is our separation vector, script R. Now the book does it a little bit differently in example 2.2, .2, I think it was, or 2.1, uh, but it doesn't matter. These are right angles that we've made. This height is a height z and we'll call this angle here theta and this angle here theta hopefully you can see those angles are going to be the exact same because of the type of triangle we have here now if we were to draw the electric field at that point p the positive q that's going to have an electric field pointing like that. So this is, you could say, E from plus Q. And that's because we assume there's a positive charge there. What would happen if we had a positive charge at that point? Where this is our angle theta. And at the same time, this would be if I can draw that a little nicer, the E field from the negative charge. And that's because the E field of a negative charge points inward. And by the same logic, this is theta. Okay. So one thing we notice if we look at this is the Y components are going to be the exact same. They're going to be equal and opposite, I should say. So this bit here will cancel with this bit here. So our net E field is only going to be in the X direction because this is our X axis. This is our Z axis. So I'm just going to make a note of that here. We'll say 
uh, only in x direction. And that's just by symmetry. So what we really want is we can say two times the E field of, say, the plus charts. So basically, this part that I'll be highlighting in light blue, we're finding the E field there, multiplying it by 2 to account for the fact that you also have the negative charge, which is a contributing an equal amount in the x direction. So that's going to be 2 times 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the charge. So I'll just denote that as plus so we know. Over script r squared. And again, we only want the x direction. So if we look at our right triangles up here, that'll be cosine theta. And this is in the i hat direction. And I should make a note that that's the E field. Uh, actually, no, I don't need to do that. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the E field in the X direction from the positive charge and multiplying it by 2 to get the uh, contributation from the negative charge. And we only want that because of the symmetry. We don't need to worry about the Y. So if you're okay with that, then that's fantastic. All we really need to do now is find out what these are actually valued as. So for example, script R. Well, that's pretty easy because we have a right triangle. So we can say script R squared. We'll start with the script R. This is the square root of z squared plus d squared over 4. So just the right triangle, you can look at this left-hand side this side squared plus this side squared is that script r squared. And if we square both sides, then the square root just goes away. So that's that part. And as for the cosine theta, we'll represent that as doesn't matter which one, but let's look at the right at the left hand side. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine theta will be d over 2 over the square root of z squared plus d squared over 4. So with that in mind, we can plug these in. We can plug in r squared is this to here. And cosine theta being this and to here. And we have everything that we need. So then your E field is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 2 times q times d over 2 z squared plus d squared over 4 you'd say to the 1 half well actually let's write it like this just so you can see where everything's coming from I don't want to skip that step so you'll have 1 over z squared plus d squared over 4. You can think of this as being to the first times. And then cosine theta, as we just said, was d over 2, the square root, or just so you can see it, z squared plus d squared over 4 to the 1 half. And this 2 will drop. And... These are being multiplied, so if you add these, you can write it under one exponent. So then your E field, and this is in the I hat direction, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 
times Q times D over Z squared plus D squared over 4 to the 3 fourths and then I have direction. This is giving the direction. It's saying that's in the X direction. That's what the I hat is. And if you wanted the magnitude, well, then you just wouldn't have your I hat there. So that is your E field. Hopefully that helps some people.